First off, I got to shout out my sister, Phoenix Rising. She is without doubt the inspiration, the motivation behind this episode of A Toast to the Men with S.G. Booker. Actually, you're going to see us doing some things starting the 1st of February. That's on a Tuesday. Uh, very beautiful woman inside and out uh, with a lot of knowledge and with the right perspective. And so I think she definitely has the perspective um, all women need to have. And of course, you know, she's growing like everyone else. But I love her perspective. And, um, and, and she's definitely submissive. Now, I know that's going to strike a chord with someone, raise your antennas. But submissive is not what you think. Listen, man, we've been hoodwinked. We've been led astray. We've been tricked. We've been bamboozled. Submissive or the act of being submissive is totally different than what you think. It really is, man. And I think this is going to enlighten a lot of people, educate and open our minds. It's going to help us move forward as men and women, uh, as masculine and feminine energies. It's going to help us move forward. And so, fellas, today's session, is how do you know if she's truly feminine and submissive? How do you know? Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to me. Now, when we come together as energies, as feminine energy and uh, masculine energy, and we decide to build, we decide to build. We decide to build our dreams, our visions, our aspirations. We decide to build. Whether that's in marriage, in holy matrimony, or I guess boyfriend and girlfriend, or in business. If you're trying to build in business, uh, men with, with, a, with a woman who has a feminine energy, and you have masculine energy, how... Do we go about that? What's the process? Well, I'll tell you. The process is likened to the same process uh, in creating a life. In creating a life. It's, it's the same process. We're going to change up the terminology. We're going to change up the words. But the process, the concept remains the same. So we'll take and this is a quick take. We'll, we'll, we'll take the process of creating a child. A seed must be planted. But before the seed is planted, the woman must be submissive. Must be submissive. Now, we've been taught that being submissive is uh, she does what you say. Basically, she's a doormat. She doesn't have an opinion. She, she agrees with everything you say. But I think we all can agree when a woman is submissive sexually, it has nothing to do with that. Right? So what does submissive mean? Submissive means she's in a position to receive. To receive. Now, during sex, of course, she's receiving your seed. She's receiving your seed. Now, the two things going on here. The man, the man must must make sure she's deserving of his seed. He must make sure she's deserving of his seed. The woman must make sure if his seed, if that man's seed is deserving to be planted in her womb. Both people have a responsibility. He has to ensure that she's worthy and she has to ensure that he's worthy. Okay, so we agree both people are worthy. He's a worthy man. She's a worthy woman. He's a worthy seed barrier. He, she's, a, she's a worthy uh, soil incubator. Okay, so the seed is planted. The seed is planted. Now, once the seed is planted, She's responsible for preparing, molding, cultivating, being an incubator to that seed, right? Now, a 
along the way that he's been prepared and incubated, he's, you know, doing his job to make her life comfortable. You know, getting her this weird, these weird food combinations, um, making doctor visits, not causing any stress. He may not even go out with the fellas, man. He, you know, he, he, he's hung it up. No, no poker playing, not going to shoot pool. Everything has changed in his life, right? Everybody, because her life is changing too, right? So people are compromising to make each other's life comfortable and pleasant. She's preparing this, this child, this seed. Now, the mother nature feels this seed has been incubated long enough. Uh, she delivers that seed. She delivers that seed, but it's no longer really just a seed. It's maturated to a human. And she delivers it. She's, man, she's so, now this is how it used to be. She's so proud uh, and elated to be able to give this man a child. Because she saw him, she sees him as worthy. Uh, she sees herself as worthy. So she doesn't even say it's her child. She's, she's, she says, I gifted you a child. I'm proud to gift you a child. I know you don't see that too often nowadays. But if you watch the movies from back in the day, the woman really took proud in being able to bear a man's child and give it, give it to him, give it back to him. Because it started all out as his seed, right? Uh, but, you know, times have changed. But we're going to try to get back on course. Now, she's delivered this, this child to him. His responsibility is to raise this child. Of course, she plays a part also. But primarily, he's to provide, uh, create a home, a safe home, a safe environment uh, of learning, teaching. Food, shelter, protection. You know, he's to take it to the next level. Right? Anytime a child, a human being, gets into trouble uh, with the law, with the court system, the first thing they ask is, where is his father? Does he have a father? Does he have a relationship with the father, with his father? That's the first question asked. Because it's the father's responsibility to take that child to the next level, to be a decent human being. The mother's played a part, and of course she plays a part also in, in raising the child, of course. But we're talking about the primary responsibility is weighed on the man. It, it really is. Uh, the man is going to be looked at. Whether he's present or not present, he's going to be looked at and looked down upon. If the child turns out horrible, we don't even look at mothers in a, in a bad way if they have bad grown up kids. We, we really don't. I, I don't know. If that's a, a subconscious thing. We really don't. We, we The first question is, did they have a father? That's the first question. And so that shows you the importance of the mother and the father and, and uh, creating and formulating a child, a human being. Now, when we come together uh, to build, you know, because even in a marriage, yeah, it's one thing to build a, a child, to create a child and raise a child. That's a beautiful thing. But can you build your dreams? Can you build a vision? Can you build an idea? And this is also... Uh, the same as when you're in, in business, in a platonic relationship, business relationship with a woman, man. She can be uh, a lesbian. She can be a so-called stud or, or, or whatever. Can you build with her in business? You can if she's feminine and submissive. Now, I want you to open your minds about being what submissive is. Submissive is not a woman being a doormat. It's not her doing everything you say and not having an opinion. It's not that. Being submissive is being a gatherer, a receiver of information. 
of information is being a listener, not just a hearer, but a listener. It's different from, it's a vast difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is that I acknowledge there is sound, there is noise. Listening is the act of intentionally comprehending information. So I can hear you that there is a sound. You said something. And I go, huh? Huh? I, I heard something was going on. But when I'm listening, I'm in the act of intentionally comprehending the information given to me. Sounds familiar? A woman being submissive in sex, receiving your seed. Now, brothers, when you plant your information, your seed inside of a woman, your ideals, your dreams, your vision, you got to make sure that woman is deserving. And, and this could be your wife, this could be your girlfriend, this could be in a platonic relationship with the woman, what's the business relationship? And I have platonic business relationships uh, with women. And uh, that's just the way it is with women, I do. Uh, but you got to make sure she's deserving of that information. Now, brothers, I don't care how high uh, her heels are, how uh, ladylike she acts or dress, or how pristine her makeup and hair is, how soft-spoken she is. I don't care about any of that. Don't be fooled. Don't be tricked. Brothers. If she can't listen, if she can't receive and gather information, if she can't practice the act of, in, of intentionally comprehending the information given to her, she ain't worthy of your time. She's not worthy of your information, dreams, vision, slash, see. She's not worthy. You're going to have a headache. You will have a headache, man. I don't care how good she looks on the oil. I don't care how much your mom, your homeboys, your, your sister loves her. You got to be honest with yourself. You know what's going on in your home. And you know that that woman can practice the act of intentionally taking in, gathering information, and comprehending it. You know, you got to be honest with yourself, right? The next step is once she takes in that seed, that information, that, that vision, that dream, once she takes that in and she can comprehend it, meaning she knows what it means. She only not only knows what it means in the present sense. She knows what it means at the end. For generations to come. She knows what this means to you. She knows your passion. Your love for this. She truly knows what it means. And appreciates it. Next step brothers. Can she prepare it? Can she prepare it? Can she cultivate it? Can she be an incubator? Going back to forming a baby. A child man. Is that Can that woman prepare. And be an incubator for your child? Right? Is she out drinking while she's pregnant. With your child? Is she out smoking? Is she having fist fights? Is she yelling, stressed out? Right? Is she, you know, not taking care of her health, not taking her vitamins, not going to the doctor? Is she worthy, brothers? Now, you planted this information inside this woman, you know, inside this woman, whether a sexual relationship or a platonic uh, relationship, is she worthy? Is she an incubator? What can she do? Does she respect this information? Does she know the value of this information? Your dream, your aspirations, your vision. What is she going to do with it? Is she sitting on it? Is she telling other people and laughing and not really taking it serious? Does she respect it? What is she going to do with it? Is it on her mind to push it forward? To deliver it? To give it back to you? Is it at the forefront of what's, imp what's important to her? Is your vision, your seed you gave her, 
important to her? Does she want to give it back to you? You got to look at that, brothers. Third step. Does she want to give it back to you? Does she want to deliver it to you? Does she want to deliver a healthy baby to you? Does she want to deliver an idea, right? A maturated ideal information back to you. Does she want to do that, fellas? Example. And I got this from my girl, Phoenix Ride. If I'm going to take her example, and I, I tweaked it a little bit. But to hone in on this. A man comes home from work and in passing, he tells his wife, wow, I'm really tired of going to this job. Uh, it's wearing me out. I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled. Just in passing. And he says, I wish I could provide for us or make a living doing X, Y, Z. Now, X, Y, Z is his gift and talent, his God-given gift and talent, whatever that may be. Right? We can replace X, Y, Z with anything. We can replace it with your gift and talent. He says, I wish I could do this uh, to provide. I would, I would be fulfilled because that's, that's what's in me. That's what I was here to do. But I'm at this dead-end job. He's just saying this, just benching in passing, right? And I highlight in passing because I don't want women using the excuse. Well, you didn't tell me directly. No, you got to be a listener, you know, whether it's direct or indirect. You got to be a listener. You got to be a gatherer, a gatherer of information with the intent to comprehend it, right? So, the seed is planted. The seed is the information. He gave her the seed. Gave her the seed. He's impregnated her. She's received it. The only way she can be impregnated, man, she has to receive it. She can't reject it. No, no uh, plan B, no more than after, uh, no birth control. She's received it. She has not rejected it. She's received this information. He's given her. The seed he's planted in her. What is she going to do with it? Is she going to sit on it? Is she not going to take it seriously? Or does she feel her man's frustration? Her man's frustration. And she has enough respect uh, and love, emotional respect for him to want to deliver a child to him. Some information to him that has been prepared and maturated to, to a sense. So what does she do? She goes out and starts gathering things to help this man fulfill, fulfill his dream, his vision, his God-given talent and gift. She goes out. She starts preparing. She starts cultivating, reaching out to people, making connections. If he's a painter, she starts getting brushes and canvases and things like that. Or if he's a filmmaker, aspiring filmmaker, man, she done saved up or whatever. Maybe she don't have to save up. Get him a camcorder with lighting and some microphones. Got him a few books. She's even read the books, maybe. She's prepared this child for him, this vision, this seed. She's preparing it. That's the submissive feminine woman, brothers. And then she delivers it to him. She's not saying, this is what I did. She's saying, here, baby. Here's a child. Here's a maturated child, fully developed child, baby. But now it's your responsibility to take it to the finish line. It's your responsibility to grow it, to raise it, to build it into the man, into the child, to the human being it needs to be. I'll help out. I'll help out. I'll play my role. But it's going to be up to you to uh, play the front man. That's what it's all about, brothers. 
being submissive is not you banging on your chest and, and beating her down emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. It's not about that. It's not about her being weak. It has nothing to do with that. Because, man, I know some weak women. I know some submissive women in the sense of how we've been taught and raised that cannot listen worth a damn, cannot comprehend information, gather information, comprehend it, prepare it, cultivate it, and deliver it back to you. There's a lot of so-called submissive women that can't do it. So we got to reprogram ourselves, brothers, about how we see a submissive woman. Right? How we see it, man. Is she a good person to team up with as far as pursuing your vision, your dream? How well does she listen? Meaning, how well does she gather information, intake, receive information, and deliver it back to you at the end of the day? Prepare it, cultivate it, be an incubator for it, deliver it back to you. How well does she do that? Now, brothers, you got to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, am I worthy of a woman like that? Do I deserve a woman like that? Am I prepared for a woman like that? Do I finish tasks? Do I finish my plate? Do I complete what I see I'm going to do? Do I leave things uh, unresolved? Am I weak? Can I face adversity? Do I give up? Do I quit? Brothers, you can't be attached with a woman who is feminine and submissive in the sense I just explained and not be a finisher. It, it, it ain't going to work. It'll never work. And so you got to play your part. You got to be able to take it to the goal line or finish it or score. Dunk it. You got to play your part. Or you don't deserve that type of woman. So, yeah, man, let's, let's, let's rearrange, reprogram ourselves, man, about the true meaning of being submissive. And I think <clears throat> it will stop us from connecting with a lot of people we really should be connected with. And for the women that's listening, man, listen, man, they, they've been duped too. They've been tricked too. And they think, you know, uh, you know, they can't be, um, they can't speak their minds and be feminine and submissive. No. Brothers, you don't want a weak woman. And I'm going to make another video about that too soon, but you don't want a weak woman. You want a woman that can be assertive at times when she needs to be speak her mind. You know what I'm saying? You want a woman, when you're not around, can speak up and not be so passive and timid and somebody's approaching her uh, that, you know, it's not warranted. She's not receptive to it. She can speak up and say, I'm not interested. She can speak up and say, don't do that. She can speak up and say, don't touch me with, with assertiveness and aggression. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a woman that is not weak. We get it mixed up thinking these women that are soft-spoken and timid are submissive. Not true. Not true. We got to call it what it is, man. Some of these women are just weak women. That's not a submissive woman. You know what I'm saying? I told you what a submissive woman is, brothers. And if you fall for the okie doke, man, that's on you. That's on you. Because there are women, man, who are so-called timid, so-called so soft-spoken, right? So-called walkovers. But you can't get nothing done with them. You can't, bro. They don't listen worth the damn. They can't gather information. They are not worthy of your seed slash information. Brothers, let me know what you think. Sisters, know what you think. Once again, shout out to my sister, Phoenix Rising. You will see us February 1st, Tuesday. Now, we're going to chop it up chop it up about a plethora of things, an array of things, and uh, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think y'all really going, going to enjoy her. So let me know what you think in the comments. As always, from me to you, love, peace.